All right, let's get Pete Prisco. I've been covering this league as an insider for 30-plus years, get into some of the storylines. Upset, shocking upset, sort of the theme here. Uh, I said earlier, the last time we had this many tasty dogs, you know, Joey Chestnut was swallowing them whole. Uh, the Titans basically swallowed the Rams whole. It was 28-16. It was not that close. How are the Titans doing it, and can they continue? And by the way, some of those teams were like Joey Chestnut after he eats them all with what was coming down the backside. Uh, yeah, look, there, there are some bad teams and bad games on Sunday. And when you look at some of these teams, you go, how did it happen, EK? I mean, you talk about, you know, the Buffalo Bills. How does that happen? How do these teams lose these games to teams they're not supposed to lose to? Well, there's parity in the NFL. And here's the bottom line. Every single team in this league has issues. It's November. And when you look at these teams right now, they all have issues. A lot of offensive line issues are showing up. And the teams that fix them in November, they're going to be the teams that separate come December. But right now, the parity is amazing. And a lot of that has to do with the fact that every single team has issues, EK. All right. Well, the Bills, you mentioned them. They're a team that has some issues. Uh, they're not playing their best football right now. Their offensive line seems to be kind of a wreck. They only score six points against the Jags, and they lose. Can I just shrug this off as sort of a, you know, a little bit of a midseason lull, you know, like a 3 o'clock afternoon lull on a work day, and that we're going to be fine? Or do you see real concerns with Buffalo? Well, I see real concerns with Buffalo, and the reason being, they didn't play well the week before against the Miami Dolphins, and the Miami Dolphins did some things attacking with their blitz, and Jacksonville did the exact same thing. You know, they blitz, but they also played zone behind it, and they seemed to confuse Josh Allen. This was a flat team. The offensive line had some injuries. They showed up in a big way. His eye level started to come down. He wasn't the same quarterback. And guys outside, I just watched the tape today, they weren't winning consistently against the defense that had given up a bunch of big plays. Here's what the Bills need to do. They need to start running the ball more. That might sound crazy when you have Josh Allen and those receivers outside. They had nine carries to their running backs in a 9-6 to six game. That should never happen. So I think that's first and foremost. Run it more, then take your shots. That will open up the passing game. All right, next up, Denver. I, I mean, they walk into Dallas and absolutely smack around the Cowboys. It was 30 to nothing with less than five minutes to go. I don't care about the final score because Dallas got a couple of absolute garbage touchdown and two-point conversions. This game was 30 to nothing on a real scoreboard. 30 to nothing. They ran it down the Cowboy throat. Same question. Can I shrug this off as, eh, you know, everybody's going to have a couple of games where they just don't have it that way. I mean, last year the Bucs won the Super Bowl. They got beat 38-3 to against New Orleans. They had four rushing attempts. Everybody gets routed once. Or do you have concerns about the Cowboys? Well, I don't think their defense has ever been as good as it's been portrayed. And, you know, Trevon Diggs has been beaten a bunch this year, but he makes big plays, uh, so he's a gambler, and he's going to get beat. And that happened on Sunday against uh, the Broncos. But they were physically beat up. And no Tyron Smith at left tackle. We've seen that play out over the course of his career and, of course, of his time missing uh, games because of injury. They struggle when he's not there, and they struggled up front on the offensive line. Dak Prescott looked rusty. It just wasn't a good performance, and I think this one you could kind of kick to the curb. Uh, they had come off a game where they won, where Cooper Rush was the quarterback. They were probably feeling pretty good. They said, okay, we got our quarterback back. We'll come out on the field. We'll just show up and win this game, and next thing they know, they're down, you know, three scores. They have to rally again around Dak Prescott. He's got to be better. One more thing about this game. Dak Prescott came in with a calf injury. C.D. Lamb was hurt. Amari Cooper was hurt coming in. Why the hell were they still in the game at the end when it was 30 to nothing? That infuriates me when teams do that. Get them out of the game. Whatever you get is garbage time numbers. It doesn't matter. Get them on the sidelines. All right. Well, they didn't. They did get a couple of, you know, it looks better in the final score when you go back and look at the end of the year and you forget about the game because there's so many games. But remember, this was 30 to nothing less than five minutes ago. This was a walloping. Browns, they walloped their in-state rival, their division rival, uh, the Cincinnati Bengals. No OBJ. They start playing well. I don't know. And if you look at the Bengals, they were the one seed in the AFC. They lose to the Jets, and now they get blown up by the Browns. What's going on in Cincinnati, and what would you make of Cleveland's performance? 
Well, I think Cincinnati starts with the defense. Uh, you know, they were playing really good defense, and then all of a sudden, it, it, it just they just came unglued. And guys that normally had played really good defense haven't been. And, and I'll talk about Logan Wilson. I think early in the season, Logan Wilson was on his way to the Pro Bowl. The last couple weeks, he's been bad. Uh, same with some of the other guys on the back end. They have to be better as a unit uh, on defense. They've been getting gashed. I mean, the Jets lit them up, and now you have the you know the Browns running all over them. So, uh, if you're the Cincinnati Bengals start with the defense and work from there because they were bad on Sunday. All right, and finally, Jordan Love, his debut. I never like to make too much. I, I almost think, like, if you're really, really good, that will get my attention. Like, Justin Herbert right out of the gate last year was crazy good. I, I don't panic if you're not good. He had a nice throw that got a touchdown, but what did you see with Jordan Love in his first career NFL start? I'm with you on that. I just think when you throw a guy in as the starter and it's at Arrowhead, and I know the Chiefs aren't the same team, but that's a tough place to play. I thought the problem with the Packers on Sunday was they got away from the run too quickly. They were pounding the ball. Dylan was running it. Jones was running it. And then they kind of got away from it, which they shouldn't have done. And that led to a ton of blitzes right in Jordan Love's face, and they never reacted to it. So uh, I put this on the coaching staff a little bit. I think they could have helped him out a bunch. Bunch. He was okay. He was uneven. He made some bad throws. He made some good throws. You could see the timing wasn't there uh, with Devontae Adams. He hasn't spent a lot of time working with him, so that was a problem. But in the end, he got his team within a touchdown. If they get a stop, get the ball back, who knows? Maybe he wins the game. So I'm with you. You can't put too much in the one uh, game, and particularly a first start at Arrowhead. Uh, give him more of a chance to really evaluate him. Uh, it probably won't come the rest of this season as long as Aaron Rodgers is healthy, but I think this is too unfair to judge him on one game. There he is, always doing it, doing it, and doing it well. Pete Prisco giving us the breakdown on the NFL highlights. Thank you very much. Certainly appreciate it. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.